We're on lesson two of chapter five, which is interpreting graphs. First, we're going to relate graphs to situations, and then we'll create a graph from a situation. Using this example graph over here, I'll teach you the idea of graphs. As we saw before in the coordinate plane, all graphs have an x-axis and a y-axis. The x-axis for these graphs serve as the independent variable. What that means is this is a variable or numbers that we plug in that don't depend on anything. Uh, they, they're running on their own schedule. For this, it would be time of day. And, and we know that time of day just, just keeps going no matter, no matter how you try to stop it. The clock is still going to tick. That's the x-axis here. It measures the time of day. Let's say this was 1 o'clock. That would be 2, 3, and 4. It doesn't give us any specifics, but some graphs do. So that would be the x-axis, the horizontal line. So the dependent variable then is the y-axis, which runs up and down, and that's measuring distance from home, or how far away you are from home. And that's dependent on what time of day it is. If it's 9 o'clock, for example, the time of day tells you to be at school on a weekday. Um, if it's 6 o'clock, you might be home for dinner. So because of the time of day, you are at a certain distance from home. This is dependent on the time of day. Using this graph, we can see that. So it doesn't give us any specifics down here, but we see that what happened here is as time went along, you left home, got farther away from home. When you stay put, when you're staying in that place, it's just a flat line because you're not getting any closer or farther from home. Maybe you're, you're at school right now. And then here it looks like you're going closer to home, but you didn't make it all the way back because the bottom line is, is all the way back. And then you're staying put where you are. Maybe you're at a friend's house after school. And then it looks like you're going farther away from home. Notice how this is farther away than that. So maybe you went to the movie theater, which is a little farther away. And then at the end it says almost teleported home, meaning look how fast this went all the way down to the end. Notice you got home in a faster time when you were this far away than it took you to leave home when you were only going this far away. So this graph also shows speed as well because it shows distance traveled compared to time. Let's see if we can do this with a couple other graphs. First we need to relate graphs to situations. So the first thing I look at when I look at graphs, I look at the independent variable, which would be time in this case. We'll do that for all three of these. And then the dependent variable, which is distance from home, which is over here. So it's comparing distance from home and time, just like our last graph actually. So now I'm going to underline important words as I read. Jenny leaves home and drives to the beach. That's important. She stays at the beach all day before driving back home. So which graph best shows the situation? Well, first, the graph needs to show me that she's leaving home and driving to the beach. So therefore, she should start at home, which is at the bottom, and then it should show her going farther away from home here. This one could work because it's at home and she's going farther away. Same thing for this one, that's good. This one I can already rule out. See, she's not even starting at home here. She's starting really far away from home, where the graph says she's at home. So I'm just going to cross this one out. I know it's not going to be graph C. So let's look at the next clue. She stays at the beach all day. And I think this is going to solve it for me. If you look at graph A, it looks like as soon as she got to the beach here, she would go right back home. But it says she stays at the beach all day, which would be a nice flat line, staying far away from home and then drives back home. So it looks like graph B is going to be our correct graph here. So we're going to say graph B. Now we need to create a graph from a situation. So it says Maylee and Katrina traveled 10 miles from Maylee's house to the movie theater. They watched a movie and then they traveled five miles farther to a restaurant to eat lunch. Sketch a graph to show the distance from Maylee's house compared to time. Use your graph to find the total distance traveled. So it tells us to compare distance from Maylee's house compared to time. And I know that time is going to affect the distance to Maylee's house. I'm going to make time my independent variable. And I'm going to make distance, we're going to call it distance from home, as the independent variable. And you see, I already have numbers here. Sometimes you have to create those numbers, but they're already in, which is just fine. It doesn't really give us time, so we're going to kind of just make estimates here with, with the time. But we do know distance numbers, so that will help. But first, it says they traveled 10 miles from Maylee's house. It doesn't really say how fast they did it, so we're just going to go on a nice line here. And we need to take it all the way to the 10, because that's 10 miles. It says they then watched a movie. So I would make that a straight line here while they're watching that movie because they're not getting any closer to home during that time but they're not getting any farther away from home either it's just a nice flat line 
It says, then they traveled five miles farther to a restaurant. So we need to go all the way to 15 then, because that's five miles farther away. And then it says they ate lunch. So usually when you eat lunch, you're just sitting at a table, not moving any closer or farther away from home. So that's the last clue. It doesn't tell me if they made it home or not, so I'm going to stop there. If they would go home, I would just have a line go all the way back to the bottom. But it doesn't tell me to do that. So we're going to stop right here for the graph. Like I said before, the time is not going to be perfect because it doesn't give you time. If it does give you time, then you can actually make it work like that. But for now, this will definitely do. The last item on the agenda, then, is to use the graph to find the total distance traveled. So here in this little segment, I see 10 miles total traveled. There is no traveling happening here. There is 5 miles here, then, and then nothing after that. So it looks like a total of 15 miles. If they would have traveled back home, that would have been 15 miles back this way, which would have been then 30 miles total. But it doesn't say that, so we're going to leave it at 15 miles.